What's up guys? My name is uh, Tai Zen. Welcome to the uh, Cryptocurrency.Market channel. Uh, this is a trading, investing, and entrepreneurship channel where we focus on the realities of trading, investing, and entrepreneurship. Um, we share with you guys the mistakes and the realities that we face. Uh, none of that fantasy hype crap or none of that crap that we read online and regurgitate it back to you guys. This yeah. Everything we share, <laughs> uh, uh, everything we share with you guys is stuff that we actually do in, in the real world, okay? So I got my uh, uh, buddy, um, a fellow uh, cryptocurrency trader and investor here with me, uh, Eric, say hello. How you doing guys? All right, so we're broadcasting uh, on the fifth floor of our uh, luxury apartment complex here and um, in District 7 in the beautiful city of Ho Chi Minh City in the southern part of Vietnam in Southeast Asia, okay? And in this video guys, um, Eric and I wanna talk about um, solving the real trading issues that you have versus taking action to avoid the problem okay so taking action to solve a real issue in your trading system your trading plan your trading endeavors versus just taking action to avoid the issue okay so i, I remember um okay so just a real quick summary in case you guys don't know my background. I came to America as a Vietnamese refugee after the war between America and the US. And I grew up, my family was very poor. I never finished high school. And I grew up in a very ghetto uh, black neighborhood in uh, the eastern part of Texas, in, in the state of Texas. And hung around the wrong people, got involved in drugs, ended up in federal prison for nearly 14 years. And then when I finally got out in my mid thirties, I had to rebuild my life. Eric was the first person to help me get a job after I got out of federal prison when I was desperately, desperately needing a job, right? And he helped me, so I'm forever thankful. And um, so one of the things that, the first job that Eric got me into was um, to work as a club promoter for, uh, in the downtown uh, area of the city called Austin in America. It was like probably the second best city to live in America next to uh, San Diego, California, right? Uh, my, my opinion. His opinion. Yeah. Okay. I prefer okay. Austin. Okay. He thinks Austin is number one. I think Austin is number two compared to San Diego, California. But they're both magnificently beautiful cities to live in, guys. You can't go wrong in either city. Okay. Um, the only thing wrong with it is all the liberal lunatics from California are moving into the city of Austin and destroying it. You know, So it may not be the second best city to live in maybe five, ten years from now. But right now it is. Okay. But anyways, uh, back to the cryptocurrency trading and investing here. Um, I remember when you got me my first job there uh, in the club district and I had a, my job was to go out there and, and talk to girls and bring them in and, um, and bring them into the, um, the, the club. Yeah, right? simple. Yeah, a very simple job. You know, when you fill up the club with lots of beautiful women, then all the guys come in there and buy drinks, buy food and spend money there. So that was how they do the marketing in the, in the clubs in the city of Austin, right? And remember our manager, that, the one that you talked to, to to give me the job, I think his name was David? Nope, that would have been Dougie Fresh. No, 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 that was second. The first one was David, the little, the, the shorter guy. Um, the white guy. That might have been who Dougie t went to talk to. Okay, oh, but you went and talked to, okay, so. Because we were standing out front. Yeah. And I, because I, Doug was the one that, that gave me the job. Yeah. Even though he, I, I think David was the primary at yeah. the moment. And I said, uh, I, I said, hey, this is Ty. And he, you guys shook hands, and yeah. I said, you need to hire him tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks at you, looks at me, mm -hmm. and he says, all right, you got your, your alcohol and beverage license, your TBC yeah. license? You said, yeah. You get okay, yeah. go talk to so-and-so, and you'll be on the schedule tomorrow night. Yeah. So that was it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm forever grateful and thankful for that, man, because that, that really helped me out when I first got out of federal prison when I had no money and nothing, man. Um, but I remember my job was to go out there and, and basically, you know, uh, talk to the women, the attractive girls, and bring them in. Now the problem was that you got me the job because I was begging for a job at that time, but, and I said, I'll do anything, and you said, okay. But you didn't know how to do it. But I didn't know how to do it because <laughs> I hadn't talked to women since I was 18 years old. You know, so it's kind of hard to go yes. and pick up attractive uh -oh. women. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to go pick up attractive women when you haven't talked to any girls or seen any girls since you were 18 years old. You know, and I'm in my mid-30s by now, right? And so, I remember I went out and talked to all these fat, you know, ugly girls and trying to bring them into the club. What are you doing, bro? Yeah, and I remember David, the manager, coming 
and he tapped me on the shoulder one time as I was walking. A, you know, I, I escorted some. You know, yeah. Some let's just say some really healthy girls. I, <laughs> you know, I don't want these jackasses. You know, these politically uh, correct people that jump on my ass and you know call out these girls being fat asses. But they were fat asses, okay? Which there's nothing <clears throat> wrong with. But there's nothing wrong with it. But the, that that the, wasn't the demographic our club owner yeah, was the, the targeting. Club, yeah, the club manager and the club owner did not want me bringing fat girls into the club. Right, and I did. I remember David tapping me on the shoulder one time after I dropped off a bunch of fat girls in the club, <laughs> and and he goes, "Hey man, I'm not paying you to bring in some fat ass girls into my club, right?" <laughs> and I remember at that time, I was scared shitless, man, because I didn't know how to talk to girls. I, you know, I hadn't seen a, you know talked to any girls since I was 18 years old. So why, like, and now I'm 34. I think it was at that time, and inside I was scared shitless of talking to girls and that's why I figured uh, I don't want to go and approach the, the hot attractive girls I'm mean, let me go talk to the ugly ones right you were and, on the, the uncle yeah. Buck program yeah and, and I remember <laughs> that I was going out there and I was talking to this ugly girl and talking to that ugly girl and that ugly girl and then he would come and tap me on the shoulder from behind yeah. uh, the manager and he would say what are you doing talking to these ugly girls for I don't want you bringing them ugly girls to the club go talk to the freaking uh, and I remember having girls. I remember having a brief conversation that mm. was something like man like I'm, I'm, that you said you were worried. Like, yeah, that, that I, I might do, lose my job. Yeah, that was that that was. Now, one of those fears yeah. was just constructed in your imagination. Yeah. The other fear was a legitimate potential financial punishment. Yeah, penalty. yeah, yeah. And just so the audience is clear, the the, the one that's legit was the, the losing was your job. Losing my job. For not that, that was a legit told, fear. Yeah, for not for, doing, for not doing my job. the requirements. Yeah, but the fear that the girls would reject me. That was just a, uh, a a fantasy that I made up in my head. That's an irrational fear. And I, I don't know what it was. We met for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. We we had a conversation, and I made a judgment call. Yeah. And I, I felt that we had like a, a, a very strong understanding, even though we had still yeah we just a, met for a few we minutes. We were still a fresh relationship. Yeah. And when you came and you told me that yeah, um, then. I, I don't know if you felt like I was comfortable with it, but I was. Well, no, 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 comfortable with, like, dude, you represent me. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't ask, it, hey, are we hiring? I have a friend that might need it. I said, you need to hire this guy. Hire him yeah. tonight, now. Do yeah. it. And, and they, they did it based on what I said. Yeah. So that being said, if you don't have a skill, there's no doubt that I, I'm not going to let you fail simply mm. because there's a couple things that you haven't learned yet. And you, sh when you came to me and, and mentioned that, hey, dude, this is this is a problem. I'm, I'm concerned. I'm worried. Yeah. Then to me, what I saw was like, okay, it's it's not missing a, a comprehension. It's not missing a physical capability to do an action. Yeah. And it definitely wasn't missing the desire to acquire a skill. It yeah. was simply not a, a skill that you didn't have. Yeah. So to me, I was like. Okay, this is a simple solution, but it's going to take repetition. Yeah, I remember you telling me like, "Hey, man, you asked for a job. I got you a job. Don't come back and complain." Basically, you said, "Hey, don't come back and bitch and complain to me that it's a tough job because you have to go talk to high girls." Yeah, right. It's something to that extent. I'm not, it may not be the exact words, but I, but I, the, I remember you saying, "Hey, you asked for a job. I got you a job." Yeah. Right? All you have to do. All you have to do is go is talk to the, the job. Yeah, go talk to the high girls and ask them if they want to come into the club. And then I remember you walking off, and I'm thinking like, what? and and at that point I realized that, you know, that's what I had to do. So I may have to. I made a commitment. I'm not going back to prison. So I'm going to go and talk to these high girls. I'd rather talk to high girls than go back to prison. <laughs> Right? It's, it's yeah. funny, the fire, some yeah. people have to light yeah. under their ass to get them to go do something in life. Even something like talking to pretty girls, Yeah, it took the threat of going to prison yeah. to get you to go do it. Yeah, so, so <laughs> what, and, yeah, and most people didn't understand that time because the, the agreement that I signed with the parole officer in, in the parole office was that I had to be employed or else they can put me back in prison. Yeah. Okay, so that's why I had to, I had to be employed. So I, I go and I start talking to it. And I think like after about approaching like maybe like 15, 16, 17 girls, right? I brought in a couple of very attractive girls and I was shocked. I was like, damn, like. That that was it. That was, yeah, that's I, all it was. Yeah. I don't know what I was afraid of. And it, yeah, and, and then I did that a few more times. Yeah. You know, I went and approached a, a, you know, another bunch of girls and then eventually one or two would want to come in. And it made me realize at that point, I was like, man, you know, like, 
all this time I was going to talk to the, you know, the fat, ugly girls, and I was avoiding the problem. The problem, the problem was, was I needed to go and the, 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 I didn't know how to talk to the attractive girls, and that's what I was afraid of. I was afraid that I didn't know how to talk to them and I would get rejected or I would get slapped in the face or that they would laugh at me or they'd make fun of me. Well, the, that, that was the same thing that could happen if you talked to fat girls. Yeah. If you talk to anybody on the street, that's yeah, well, the same potential. You know, at potential. that time... The difference is we have an attachment and to like the hot girls and all of a sudden a, a guy think that that's going to affect them emotionally more. Yeah. That's going to, uh, it's going to identify mm -hmm. who you are. Oh, you're a chump. Uh, you don't, you know, you can't get girls. Like all of a sudden we attach to something like yeah. that, which is just silly. Yeah, and I remember you, you telling me one time, uh, several times, different ways, like, hey, just approach him and smile and ask him, hey, you guys, would you guys like to come in to our club? You know, and if they say no, try something else. Try this, try that. And what, what really opened my eyes was like, man, you know, like, I did not know how to approach girls and talk to them. And just with the two or three simple things that you share with me, and by going to them, because you, you have done it hundreds and thousands of times already, and you knew it worked, so you're like, hey, man, look, there's hundreds of ways to do it but here's a few that i know works for you know has a high probability of success go and try it and when i did it i was like hey you know this stuff really works and what, what really shocked me was that wow this whole time i was afraid to do this and just by getting educated get learning from someone that had done it hundreds and thousands of times already those few you know things to say to the girls right really opened my eyes like wow you know like I could do this, right? And I realized that, man, you know, all this time I was avoiding the problem. And the, pro the root of the problem was I didn't know how to talk to girls. I didn't know how to start a conversation with them. I didn't even know how to greet them, okay? Because no one ever taught me. And when I was old enough to even think about girls, I went straight to prison. And so I never had, you know, uh, you know, all I know was how to talk to a bunch of freaking, you know, thugs and, 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 and street gangs you know, and how to greet them and say hello to them. So I know a hundred different ways to, to greet a, a blood or a crypt gang member without getting punched in the face or getting shot. But when it comes to talking to girls, I didn't know one single uh, 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 line approach. or one approach method or nothing to how to approach a girl and start a conversation with them. And so just a few methods that you showed me, it really opened my eyes like, damn, there's people actually out there that has done this already and figured it out. And all I gotta do is just learn it from them. Something that impressed me though was most people, they, they just say, I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah. And even uh, other guys, if, if you asked any of the other guys, yeah. they're like, well, just do it. Yeah. And you know, just, uh, and just go say hello to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know? And, yeah. But to me, I, I felt like you were trying to find something mm -hmm. that you could actually, uh, like, like a process. So you, you wanted to understand something that's different than than just, uh, uh, right? Yeah. And, and you really wanted to understand what was happening. So for me, it was like a compliment, like, okay, so I, I can have an opportunity to actually put into words and structure, like this is what's happening, because I really like social stuff. Yeah. I really like uh, like just this kind of psychology and all this. Okay, so here's what's happening in these situations. Mm -hmm. So it was good to me to break those down when you had a question and a genuine desire to learn, and then I would see you turn around and apply and, it immediately. And apply it immediately and do it again and do it again and then say, hey, these are my results, what, what's, uh, and then I'd say, oh, we'll do this in this situation. Yeah. And then it would help. And it's yeah. not just do this like ABC like a robot. It's like, hey, look at what's happening in the energy in this group. Yeah. Be you, careful you, if you, it's you, turning on you. Be careful if it's doing this. Be aware yeah. of the scenario. You know and when you acquired more and more education, then all of a sudden, the problems that you were having mm -hmm. reduced more and yeah. more. The success that you were having was more and more. And then it got to the point where three years later, you know, after picking up like 25,000 girls and being rejected by about 75,000 girls, right? Um, I ended up starting bringing more girls into the club than you did. Which is true. Yeah, which is it's also a, it's also a, uh, uh, um, a pat on the, the back for you to share the right information with me to get started on the right foot, you know? And for me to take action, massive action, to compound that and practice it and become, and develop new techniques on how to interact with uh, uh, women and in, 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 in the social environment. But back to what I was saying at the beginning, you know, when I was approaching- People avoiding problems. Yeah, I was avoiding the problem 
of not knowing what to do or what to say when I met girls, right? And this really hurt me also later on when I got into trading. When I started learning trading, I started learning all the technical analysis just like everybody else, but learning technical analysis, it, it, it didn't, I didn't realize it, but learning technical analysis versus learning how to make money in trading are two different skills. Agreed. Right? Because yeah. you can learn technical analysis and be a badass technical analyst, but that doesn't mean you make it a dime, a profit. We met plenty of people. Yeah, we met plenty of people in our careers and at many, so many meetups and conferences. And they, could, they were like the baseball facts guy, yeah. where they could quote uh, baseball facts guys, for, for those of you who don't know, some, sport, some sports nuts that love the sport of baseball will be able to tell you every single player, what year they played on which teams, how much they were traded for, what their stats are, what their, their strikeout uh, ratio is, to, uh, like, batting what their average, batting average is. So they, they can tell you all this information, but they don't play the sport, and they, don't, they, just, they just have this warehouse of information. Guys in the, the trading and the technical analysis world, same way. Tons of them, where they can tell you mm -hmm. everything about Elliott Wave Theory, about statistics, Fibonacci. Bol Bollinger Bands, yeah, Fibonacci, RSI, waves and, oh God, uh, the red light, green light boxes. Like they, they can tell you all these things, but none of them were making money. Yeah, and and that that was the mistake was we and that, that we were learning from those idiots, you know, that were not making life changing profits in in, in in trading. And just so you know, you guys know, you guys hear me, you know. Uh, uh, bash on a lot of these uh, technical analysts, you know, and I, I want you guys to realize that technical analysis is necessary and it is important in trading. So don't don't think that just because we say that you don't have to learn technical analysis. You still have to learn technical analysis, but be aware that it's one piece of the puzzle. You know, that's uh, you know? a great way that mm -hmm. you described it to me a long time ago as we were learning more and more was that it was like a car. Yeah. Right? And after speaking with different schools and learning from different schools mm -hmm. and studying all these different disciplines within the trading and investing and money making realm yeah that it was like hey you know some of these things are important but some of them are not so yeah. like in a car what what are the important pieces you need an engine you need transmission you need there's a handful of things that you need but some of these schools are teaching you like uh, yeah. Steering wheel covers. Yeah, and, or seat covers. Yeah, seat covers and like a rear view mirror. None of those are required to for the vehicle to drive. Yeah. Right? Uh, safety belts. Yeah. Those if, are important. If, if, if you want to get from point A to point B, you need a minimum. If, if you want a vehicle that gets you from point A to point B, you need a minimum of an engine, a transmission, an axle, some wheels, right? Gas. And, and some gasoline, a gas tank. Okay, you don't need headlights, you don't need tail lights, you don't need safety belts, you don't need airbags, you don't need rear view mirrors. But you the thing is, if you're missing any one of those primary components, yeah, it doesn't you can't, go. Yeah, the car won't move, it, it won't hey, work. Hey bro, a Ferrari with no gas <laughs> goes nowhere. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> you, you, you can get from point A to point B without rear view mirrors and headlights. But you can't get from point A to point B without the Engine. transmission, Yeah. right? Or without wheels. <laughs> so in trading, it's the same way. Right? There are components in trading that are like the engine and the transmission, and then there are components that are like the rear view mirrors and, 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 and the seat covers, okay? Is it, is it nice to have them? Yes, but it's not mandatory in the beginning, okay? So what, what I'm saying here is that in the beginning, you, I would say that if you're a new trader, right, look at what you are doing. Like look, look at your actions and look at what you're focusing on in your cryptocurrency trading and investing and ask yourself, am I focusing on this to avoid solving the real problem in my trading game? Or am I doing this just to look busy and act busy and act like I'm doing something? Am I pulling up charts and doing bullshit technical analysis on it every day and not making a single trade, right? Or taking action on it, right? Like, like for example, I see all these, you know, you know badass traders on, on Twitter and they're talking about, oh, you know, look at this chart here, look at this Fibonacci here, look at this moving average here, look at this Ichimuchu cloud here, you know, and all this other dumb shit. Inverted yeah. Batman muff yeah. muffin this, top. You know, head and shoulders here, you know, <laughs> triangle pattern here, square pattern there, circle pattern there, right? But my, they never say that, hey, I am buying this right now because of this pattern. They yep. never say that. They just post that shit, you know? When I post my trend analysis, I tell you, hey, I'm buying at the bottom of the trend channel, right? and I'm looking to sell or rebalance my portfolio if it goes to the other side of the trend channel. 
I tell you exactly what I'm doing. I, I don't sit there and put up charts to look pretty and you know make myself look smart or look like I'm a badass technical analyst. Okay, I don't want to be known as a badass technical analyst. I want to be known as the guy that makes, money. That makes a shitload <laughs> of life-changing profits in cryptocurrency trading and investing. That's what I want to be known as, right? So that's why whenever, you know, like the, the, the students that get into our cryptocurrency investing blueprint, you know, uh, we have the cryptocurrency investing blueprint available at www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint. One thing that people are shocked at when they get into our cryptocurrency investing blueprint is that we spend more time talking about how to make a profit. How, how do we use the cryptocurrency market to help us quit our day job and retire early? That's what we like to talk about and that's what we like to share with other people. As far as, you know, whether you know MACD or Fibonacci or, uh, or not, you know, or RSI or relative strength or, or, or stochastics or any of that nonsense, whether you know it or not is not as important to us as if you know how to take advantage of the cryptocurrency market so you don't lose your entire account and make money when the market gives you an opportunity. Okay? And, and, and know how to take profits accordingly. Okay? So that's more important to us to teach that in the cryptocurrency investing blueprint than to just randomly talk about a bunch of theory or a bunch of fantasy that we haven't seen people do and that, that to allow them to quit their jobs so and retire early. We talked about how this uh, avoiding the real problem mm -hmm. uh, played out in the whole women and talking mm -hmm. to girls and things like that in, in, in your past. Uh, and then again in, in trading. Yeah. And that's what people face in trading. Um, I guess a, a more like at home scenario that everybody might uh, experience is, hey, maybe you've got something that you need to sell. Maybe you've got something at your house that you need to sell or even your house. Yeah. And you need to you need to start taking photos and put it up on a real estate yeah. site or put it up on eBay, whatever the item is. Um, but you know what? I gotta go take care of the car. Oh, yeah. I gotta go, I gotta go do this, I gotta go do that. And we find consistently that people will if this is the thing that you have to accomplish, they'll just keep putting more and more tasks in front of what they need to do and you delay they'll finish it. it and they'll yeah. delay it they'll put it off they'll procrastinate mm -hmm. they'll postpone and they simply won't do what they need to get done yeah because they're avoiding the real problem I, I would even like to just just for uh, the sake of doing it because it's it's great when somebody does that to me every now and then mm -hmm. issue a challenge if you're watching this video what's one thing that you've been meaning to get done and you've been putting off that you know improves your cryptocurrency trading and investing. You know it that done. it's going to improve it, right? Go get it done. Don't 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 dilly dally. Uh, yeah. Don't lollygag. <laughs> don't fanny about. <laughs> uh, do the things that you need to get done. Uh, if if there's anything around the house, if there's anything in your trading and investing life, anything in your personal life, don't don't avoid the things that you need to do. Because often we or or you know what, that's that's one aspect. But the 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 more impactful one mm -hmm. is when we think that doing something else is going to achieve this yeah, goal and exactly. we're going the wrong direction yeah right when uh mm -hmm. there was times when i was in my in my fight career mm -hmm. in my uh, my professional athlete career yeah i wound up spending my time being a mentor to others yeah instead of putting myself in the position where i was the one being mentored yeah and a good chunk and how, how did that hurt you that prevented me from having the, the skill set that I needed, the opportunities that I needed, the drive as a professional athlete. If yeah. you're a coach, you're not doing the same as an athlete is. Yeah. Plus, uh, when I was working with students, I would roll, I would I would be physical, uh, rolling and, and sparring and training with all of my students. I, I didn't just sit back and not tell you yeah. what to do. Like, I, I was proof is in the pudding. Because yeah. my greatest experience was when I was rolling and, and I was training uh, grappling, wrestling with the, the best guys that I could get my hands on. Yeah. And I said, that's what I want. So when I was teaching, I, I decided, hey, maybe the best thing that I can do is give that to other people. If I acquire yeah. this skill, I need to I need to share it, share it, share it as much as yeah. possible. And that maybe give them the, the spark that, gave, that it was given to me. Yeah. Um, so the thing is that... I, I needed uh, to be financed to do that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a sponsor that was going to take care of everything. Yeah. And I, it was a now or never type thing. If you want to be an elite level athlete, mm -hmm. your body has a physical expiration date. Yeah. So you have to focus on that. So although I invested in myself mm -hmm. during the time that I was not focusing on regular jobs and making mm -hmm. money, I was focused on being an athlete. I invested in myself in education during that time. but. 
financially, I wasn't in a position where I could just go and have the best coaches in the world mm -hmm. and have the best physical trainers and have the best dietitian. And what, right? what, and what would you say is the difference whenever, like, I know that right now, you, you've been on a journey, a worldwide journey. You stopped here in Ho Chi Minh City to, uh, to uh, uh, visit me, but you're also training with other people, with other black belts uh -huh. uh, in jiu-jitsu. Um, talk about how, like, the difference it made to be able to work with some of the best guys on the planet. Oh, man, and, and, it, and, made, it made and all the, the difference. The advantage that working with, you know, professional black belts and, and what you gain out of that in six months of training with them versus six years of training with a bunch of knuckleheads or a bunch of average guys. Now, you do require a little bit of the grind. Mm -hmm. You do require the repetition. You do require... But is it worth it? It, did, it? Was it worth it at the end of all that? Um, the, the method that I used for my entire career mm -hmm. could, have been, could have been shortened and more effective. Yeah. So, In what way? So part, part of just grinding is important, which means yeah. just going and doing your day-to-day -day training. Yeah. Part of that is important. You have consistency, you have mm -hmm. repetition. However, getting your hands on the best training partners, mm -hmm. the best instruction, yeah. private lessons, all those things, th those are extremely valuable. Those make huge differences. And I used to think, oh, I don't need to you know, pay for private lessons. I don't need to do this and do that. My, my perspective now is completely different. I yeah. My, my jujitsu is better than it was uh, yeah. five, 10 years ago when I was competing, right? Yeah. I mean, I may not be the athletic specimen that I was, yeah. but my jujitsu technique is better than it was. And now I believe wholeheartedly, hey, when you have great people that you, you need to pay and take private lessons with them, learn something because everybody has a very different perspective and they can add something that can trim years off of your learning curve. Yeah. Right? So if you have an opportunity to jump in the, pa the back pocket of someone successful, spend some time, there might be one small lesson that you learn. And what is something that you guys actually teach in the class is that the small hinges swing, but small hinges swing big doors, right? Yeah. The, the, the there's small in, in trading, things that yeah. make big impact, and perspective is a is a huge one. So if I enter every um, uh, scenario with an open mind, then I'm I'm more capable of of learning from it and and benefiting from it. So the the deal is that I was pursuing, I wanted to be a professional athlete, mm -hmm. but. The way I was going about it was being a coach in the gym. Yeah. And that was that was great to be in the environment all the time. It was great to like I was I was training all the time, but it wasn't ideal for uh, because per, you were per, training with guys was, lower than I, your I skill was, level. I was the guy mentoring others instead of being mentored by others. Yeah. So it was not ideal to reach my athletic uh, goals as as yeah. a, as a, a competitor. Okay, so you, you just reminded me of something. So uh, I, I, though I thought I was doing it for the same reason. Yeah. What I was doing was not going to get me to the goal that I had. Okay, so you just reminded me of something that I want to share. Okay, so at the moment as we're speaking, right, just a few weeks ago, you know, the price of the the Tezos coin was under a dollar. Ah. So you know, I, I bought a bunch of it when it was under a dollar. But you've right? been talking about. Been talking about this whole year. Right, but just a few weeks ago, it fell some more, so I bought some more, and now it's gone up. It's gone up, and and the same people who did not buy when the price crashed under a dollar. Yeah. Now, when, when when you're online saying, "Hey, I'm buying right yeah. now," right? I can't tell you what to do because I'm not a licensed financial like, advisor. But 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 but, 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 right but, but, but no no I, yeah I cannot advise what people to do, but I can just only share what I'm doing and what they do is their business, right? But I, it, it strikes me funny that I am buying when it's below a dollar and I broadcast it out to everybody so that everybody can see it, right? Because I don't want to be one of those traders that talk about it after the fact, right? So, you know, I post that I buy it, I even screenshot my, the orders that I get filled and I show people that, hey, I'm buying, right? So, what, what, what cracks me up is that the same people who did not take action when the market was on, when the price of the, the Tesla token was on sale, now they buy it, when it's above a dollar, and the minute it goes up to a dollar fifty, a dollar sixty, right? They wanna sell it after it makes like 10%, or 15%, or 20%, right? And I wanna go back and talk about, you know, how, why, why are these people doing this? What is the problem that they are trying to avoid? 
making a decision, right, for themselves. Well, yeah, yeah. Not only that, but what what is the root thing that they? In my like, I, I've been thinking like, what what is the root problem that they are trying to avoid that they're not solving? Like, they want to sell this, right? They want to sell this coin after it made ten to twelve percent. And you and I already know that. Why would you take all this risk just to make ten percent? Go go to the stock market if you want to do that, right? We're, we're risking all. We're taking these huge risks in the crypto market simply because. We want to make a uh, life-changing profits, and life-changing profits are measured in multiples, like 5x, five times your money is called 5x, 10 times your money, that's 10x, 100 times your money, that's 100x. We're not talking about you know 5% profit or 10% profit or 50% profit, right? And you know what? I, I, I have come to this conclusion that the people who sell too early, they buy too late and they sell too early, they're doing that because they're avoiding the real problem. And you know what I think the real problem is? What's that? The real problem is they won't take the time to learn how to do it correctly. They won't take the time or to get- Or spend the money. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say- To invest. Uh, yeah, they, they won't invest the time and the money in to learn how to do it correctly, right? And instead of doing that, they just wanna make a quick buck. The minute it goes up 10, 20%, they wanna sell it, and we will go brag to their friends that look at me, look at me, look at how smart I am. I didn't have to study, I didn't have to practice, I didn't have to learn shit, and I made 10%, right? And you and I are looking at each other like, what the hell are you talking about? The market moves 10% in an hour, in yeah. two hours. Like that, that's normal, that the market fluctuates five to 10% every day, so you capturing 10%, that's nothing, because you could be down 10% the next day, right? Yeah. Hell, you can buy something and turn around and sell it right back and lose 10% right there on some coins because there's not the enough spread. trading volume. Yeah, the spread is too wide. So, so t making a 10% gain or a 20% gain really means nothing in crypto. Like m making a 10x, 10 times your money, Yeah. you know, you put in $100 and you make 10 times that and you make $1,000 profit, that is something to be talked about. If you put in $10 and you get 20 times out of your money and you make $2,000 profit, that's something worth bragging about and tweeting about. But 10, 20%, like to me, when somebody sells that early, they're avoiding the real problem. And the real problem is that they're trying to hide the fact that, you know what, they're not willing to invest the time and money to get educated and learn how to do it correctly. They would rather say, hey man, look, look what I did. I don't have to spend all that money and time like you and uh, Ty, like you did or Eric did, to learn how to become successful traders. Look at here, look, I just made 10, 20%. And to me, that those people are never going to be able to make consistent life-changing profits. So I, let me let me hit that from another perspective. Okay. Uh, let's let's say I'm one of those people. Yeah. Um, I hope not. But let's, we, well, let's uh, let's pretend. Okay. Um, and not slapping me. Yeah. <laughs> I know how you get emotional. How about an elbow? Okay. You know. So um, let's say I'm one of those people that uh, doesn't want to take the time to get the education that I need yeah. to make those life-changing profits in my life. Yeah. Like. What is it? How how can I determine that I that that is that is a problem that I have, or that is something that would benefit me? Well, and how can I also how can, how can I evaluate? Because if I'm a, if I'm not educated yeah. in, in this arena, yeah. how can I evaluate what kind of education I need and where I should get it? Well, here, here's here's one thing. Or right? who's, who's a credible source to provide that education for me? Okay, um, you know th this video is about focusing on you know taking action to solve real problems that can improve our trading versus, you know, taking action to just, you know, avoid the issue, Okay. right? So I don't want to dive too deep in, because that's, that's actually a topic that we can make a video completely by itself on, right? About how to select the right traders and the right mentors and things like that. We'll make that in a separate video. Uh, that, that's a good suggestion. But what I want to say is that my first thing, remember the mistake, I go back to the mistakes that you and I made when we first started uh, learning. We made a lot of them. Yeah, we made a lot of them, but one of the <laughs> things that we made the mistake on was we were learning from traders that did not trade for a living. That was true. They taught for a living. Yeah, they, they taught for a living versus make money from trading for a living. Yes. Right? And on YouTube and on, on uh, we have a lot of crypto influencers nowadays that they make a living because they have so many subscribers. They make a living off of the advertising on their videos versus actually making a living from the profits of their trading or their investing in crypto. There's, there's, so, so there's actually a huge quite a few companies, like <laughs> e easily thousands, that have approached your channel 
yeah. uh, that have requested, hey, what's your what's your fee to yeah. review our coin, or what's our yeah. fee to do yeah, an interview? Yeah, we don't. I avoid. You know, I do everything I can to avoid. You know that because I don't want people to think like when I talk about a coin. Like for example, I've been talking a lot about Tezos and the Energy uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dot World uh, token, right? So both of those are really good staking coins. Um, energy, um, you know, I'm making really good money staking that each month, right? And then the Tezos, you know, I I invested into it because I believe that you know they have the most money to develop their project. They have a big community, and I believe that they're going to last longer than the other projects. And that in the long term, it's going to be a huge profit, like 10x, 100x for me. So I'm putting my money on that. Okay, but. Okay, when, 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 when I do that, it's, it's because I'm looking at the data of, of what they have, and I've been saying that, it's not like it just started moving up and now I jump on. I've been saying this even when Tezos was yes. below a dollar, I've been saying it since it was above a dollar, below a dollar, above a dollar, I've been saying this the whole time, that we gotta average in, buy in small chunks at a time. And okay? this just has to do with nothing other than your, your personal uh, investment perspective studies. Yeah, uh, from my it experience, doesn't have to do with any outside influence or company making suggestions. No, no. Whereas, and, and, whereas when, when, when I talk about, we would get those uh, those those emails. Yeah, when, that when say, I get those requests, thing, then we turn around and look, and there'd be 50 advertisements on YouTube, 50 other reviews yeah. from guys telling talking about trading. Yeah, but we know that they they're don't made, trade. Yeah, they're, they're just making money for talking about stuff. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with people making money off of advertising on their channel because they have a the large following. The problem is when you're a, a beginner, viewer, when you're a beginner and you're trying, trying to learn, learn how, to, how trade. to trade, right? You want to focus on learning from the people that's actually trading for a living, investing for a living. They're living off of their profits. They're not living off of welfare. They're not living off of government, you know, retirement programs like Social Security. They're not living off of a company pension. They're actually living off the profits of their trading. You are living off the profits of your trading and investing in crypto. I'm living off the profits of my trading and investing in crypto. Even though I have a company that, that you know, sells a, a, a course that teaches people how to trade, I do not live off the profits of that. That, That's, pays, that, for the, that pays for the like, company. Whenever people uh, purchase our cryptocurrency investing blueprint, right, that money right there, it just helps keeps the operations like you know to pay for staff to help you know upload videos and you know a bunch do a bunch of knickknack stuff that I don't want to do yeah. and our team doesn't want to do, but that's not what pays for our living expenses. Like my bills every month are paid from my cryptocurrency trading and investing. The money that I invest in and trade in cryptocurrencies, that's what pays my bills each month. That's what pays. Uh, um, uh, uh, David's bills. That's what pays your bills. That's what pays Leon's bills. So this, uh, t to me, this all ties in. Yeah. To me, if um, what we're talking about right now, where so, the so, conversation so. has shifted, yeah. is that learning from someone who actually performs the skill that you want to learn, yeah. as opposed to somebody that just gets paid to talk about it. Yeah. Like, right? if, if, like so that's like, that's different. That's that's doing something because that's what needs to be done versus avoiding the issue or not knowing any different yeah. and doing well, we'll other talk, things that well, don't achieve your yeah, goals. Like, I, I don't want to get too far off the topic of you know taking action that solves a real problem to improve your trading and investing versus taking action to avoid the issue. Mm. Okay, so, but we'll, make, we'll definitely make a separate video to talk about you know how to find a, a good you know, uh, 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 cryptocurrency trading, uh, 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 you know, mentor or someone to follow. You know, uh, like uh, I, I think that our cryptocurrency investing blueprint is is the uh, the absolute best training on the on the planet. You, if you or anyone else know of a better training plan, let me know so I can go learn it too. Okay, because I'm always open to learn to get better. Okay, but it, right now on the planet, if you want to learn how to manage a seven, eight, nine figure cryptocurrency portfolio. I think that our cryptocurrency investing blueprint is the absolute best training on the planet, in my opinion. Okay, and you can get that at www.cryptocurrency.market/blueprint. Right? Like I said, you you find something else that's better, let me know. You know, because I'm always open to learn. Okay. So, um, any last thoughts before we wrap up this video? No, it's just really great to you, you know we have these conversations throughout the day where we yeah. where we touch on all these different topics and it's really nice to feel like because I don't, I don't do tons of videos myself yeah but it's really nice to feel like 
a conversation that we have and topics that like aha moments that yeah. we have where we're like, oh, you know what? This is actually really valuable information yeah. that we're able to share that. And that's that's really cool. So yeah. I'm, I'm grateful we, to be here. Yeah, like, you know, like just so you guys know, like if you see me recording these videos with Eric or with Leon or with David or anyone on our team, you know, or any of our clients or students or our friends or anything like that, just know that these are the conversations we have constantly throughout the day. You know, that's why sometimes when Eric is around, I try to get him to sit down with me and we record the videos so we can share with other when people. When he's not busy leaving me in other countries. Hey, dude, man. <laughs> so in case you guys don't know, I, I you know, uh, Ditched I, me. I intentionally abandoned him, okay, in, uh, in Cambodia a few days ago. We went over there for a vacation and then I left him there and then went home with my wife and kids, right? I had no worries that he was going to get hurt or get lost or, you know, or anything like that. My wife and kids wanted to leave early, so we just left, right? While he was out looking for something, we just, uh, we were in the casinos together in one of the casinos and then we walked around and then we did, you know, <laughs> we, we parted ways, you know, and then I texted him later on that we were on the, you know, on the way back to uh, Ho Chi Minh City, you know, <laughs> and he was stuck in Cambodia trying to figure out how to uh, uh, get to the capital and, and meet some friends and then come back uh, yeah. on his own. Hey, but hey, like I said, here I am. You're here, right? <laughs> we're making a video. You're safely back in Vietnam. No big deal, right? You're not the first, uh, you know, uh, American to come to uh, to uh, Cambodia. Hey, uh, j j check this out, man. I will say this, you should thank me that if it hadn't been for me abandoning you and leaving you, ditching you in Cambodia, you wouldn't be able to live out your childhood dreams of having the Indiana Jones experience, you know, so. Man, <laughs> that guy has a great hat. Yeah, and that was the only thing I was missing. <laughs> I, need, you know? I need the hat. Hey, when you sent me that video of all the bulls and all the buffaloes. <laughs> yeah, the water buffalo you, road yeah. crossing. And you know, I, I actually, when, when I everywhere. first saw that, I thought you were actually on a water buffalo. I was like, <laughs> damn, boy, transportation that bad over there in Cambodia? <laughs> oh, hey, but, 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 but hey, you, you guys have got to come over here to Vietnam, to Cambodia, to Thailand, man. If, the, 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 these are some amazing parts of the world, guys. If you're in America, you've got to come over here and just check it out once in your lifetime, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right now, guys. I don't know, I, I don't know if you can smell it, but I don't know if it's wood burning or somebody's smoking weed or what, but I, I, I smell something that's... Uh, it's like wood or plastic or something. Yeah. Let's yeah. just say there's an herbal smell in the air, okay? So, well, th hey, thanks for watching this video, guys, and um, make sure that that uh, uh, if, you're, if, if you're not fully educated on cryptocurrency trading and investing, go get a copy of, the, of our cryptocurrency investing blueprint at www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint. And then make sure you follow me on Twitter at PayTaiZen. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you go and subscribe to our newsletter at www.cryptocurrency.market slash newsletter. And uh, when, when you put your name and email in there, I'll send you a, uh, a copy of the uh, six key ingredients to creating a, a life-changing profits in cryptocurrency trading and investing. Okay, so thanks for joining me on this video and thanks for joining me on this video also guys and I'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Thank you. Can't believe you're still salty about the uh, <laughs> Cambodia stuff, man. <laughs>